everyone, and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, Tuesday night, the Sulphur Springs City Council voted unanimously in favor of a five-year employment contract for City Manager Mark Maxwell. The vote came after a 26-minute meeting and executive session to discuss matters affecting the city manager, including a performance review, employment terms, and other issues. Uh, also, uh, before the vote, the council heard from six individuals who each, each asked the council to extend a contract to Maxwell. Speaking were Robert Lennington, Tim Kelty, Clay Walker, Brad Johnson, David Nygarth, and John Heilman. Contract terms include an annual performance review for Maxwell. The council also opted to postpone until the next council meeting a proposed ordinance establishing curfew hours of 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. weekdays and 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. on weekends for unaccompanied minors, uh, that is, a youth under the age of 17. The council also took another step in obtaining uh, voter-approved funding of up to $3 million for improvements at Pacific Park and a new Senior Citizens Activity Center. The council approved resolution number 1187 directing publication of the notice of intention to issue combination tax and revenue certificates of obligation. Oscar Aguayo was authorized in Resolution 1188 as a representative for the city uh, investment account with Tex Pool. Aguayo, the city's accounts specialist, replaces Kathy Steele, who retires after 46 years with the city. A 32-year-old Heber Springs, uh, Arkansas man was accused Tuesday night of leaving his injured children in the vehicle following an interstate crash Tuesday night. Police uh, were dispatched to Interstate 30 West at 6.53 p.m. on January 7th uh, to a report of a major crash. Police officer reported locating a fleeing person identified as 32-year-old Tommy Lee Jones of Heber Springs, Arkansas. Jones allegedly admitted he had been driving a blue Chrysler Sebring that had crashed on the interstate. Police in arrest reports allege Jones left injured children in the crash vehicle at the crash site. Two children in the car were later transported to the hospital with possible serious injuries, uh, police officers uh, allege in arrest reports. Dispatchers confirm the 32-year-old Arkansas man did have an active uh, parole warrant for his arrest out of Arkansas. Jones was taken into custody at uh, 7.16 p.m. Uh, yesterday and transported uh, to jail on the third-degree felony charge of accident involving injury or death and uh, the Arkansas parole warrant. Hopkins County uh, Sheriff's Investigators Wednesday put out a request to help in locating items taking, taken during a burglary. Several guns and a gray 2004 Chevrolet Suburban with a license plate MDB0345 uh, were reported to have been stolen from a residence on FM 1567 south of Highway 11 East either late uh, Saturday night uh, January 4th or early uh, Sunday, January 5th, according to Hopkins County Sheriff's Office reports. Anyone with information regarding the guns, vehicle, or anything related to the reported burglary are asked to contact the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office at 903-438-4040 or uh, ask for invest, um, investigator wage sheets at 903-558-0027. Tips may also be called in to Lake Country Crime Stoppers at 903-885-2020. Callers to Crime Stoppers can remain anonymous. In sports, number four ranked uh, Wildcats basketball team got off to a fast start 
on their way to a solid 81-40 win over Sherman Tuesday night at Sherman. We get more from Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta. Yeah, we did a really good job of just coming out uh, focused and with purpose. And um, I thought we were really physical in the beginning, got the ball to the spots we wanted to get it to, and uh, just really made it hard for them to, to guard us. Um, the guys did a great job of probably uh, one of the best offensive games we've had since my time here. We just, the ball went to the right spots and uh, it kept moving, and we made the right reads almost all night. And um, I think throughout the game, we had like two or three turnovers only, and um, just a really well ran game on both ends of the floor. Uh, you talk about all the time we hear you punching somebody in the mouth, and right. we did the punching last night, sound like. We did. We came right out the gate. And, uh, just really made a, 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 a stand on defense and a stand on offense, and um, you know, got to establish our identity early on and not have to react to somebody else. So that was a, a fun game to be a part of. That's on day day, another giant game. He just really enjoying his senior year. He is. Uh, he played outstanding. We threw the ball into him early, and um, I thought a few games, like in the Princeton game, he was kind of hesitant. Uh, a couple other games I've called him out this year where um, you know, he just wasn't aggressive, so we really tried to get back to him being aggressive and um, getting him the ball early, and he was on a mission. I think he scored the first seven or nine points. They just couldn't guard him. Um, he did a really good job of playing with a high motor and uh, you know, really just kind of establishing uh, his identity down low. Uh, the last time we talked, uh, a kid that we talked about really uh – well, I think we were talking with your assistant coach, mm -hmm. actually, but Caleb Alexander, yes. we talked about how he's not just sitting over on the bench. He comes in with purpose and had 11 big ones. He does. Uh, so, LaMadre Johnson got hurt in practice. Uh, he didn't get to play last night, uh, rolled his ankle. So, that opened up a, a spot for Caleb, uh, you know, to get some uh, early minutes. And, man, he came out firing that thing. He had 11 points in the second quarter. Uh, just really uh, shot the ball uh, well, but he was just fearless, that, and that, that's what I like the most. You know, he's going to make shots, he's going to miss shots, but is he ready to shoot at all times? And uh, you know, is he not scared to do that? And man, he he really helped change the game. Grayson said, uh, "You know, a guy's hot when when I call out a play and we go away from Grayson's side and run it to the other side of the floor." Um, so I thought that was a, a another cool part of last night. Uh, now you've got uh, another uh, non-district game, mm -hmm. part of a back-to-back with. And uh, McKinney North, awfully good team last year. Very good this year as well. Uh, they have size and side. They got a big boy in the middle. Um, they have a guard who's as uh, talented as almost any guard we've played. We actually played them in the springtime uh, or the fall time in a shootout and uh, barely snuck by them, but they, uh, they didn't have all their kids. So uh, we anticipate it's going to be a different ball game um, this go around, but hopefully we've gotten better too on our end, so uh, it would be a good matchup. Probably a playoff uh, type opponent. I think they're talented enough that they can probably win their district. Um, so it will be a good challenge for us. Um, you scrimmage them early. How, uh, at least you know kind of some of their guys and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it was a, a false shootout, so we couldn't coach oh, okay. in it. Um, but we kind of have a, an idea. And I've, at this point, when you play a team, we have 15 films on them. So you get a good idea of what they can do and, you know, kind of what they want to do. They run a lot of sets. They can throw it inside. Their bigs can shoot it outside. They do a lot of dribble weave stuff. They'll man to man you. They'll two three zone you. So they'll, they'll do a variety of different things, but they're really well coached, um, well balanced, can attack from different ways. Kind of reminds me of us on the offensive end, just, uh, just really makes the right play. Um, so, you know, we'll have our hands full, but hopefully we can come out and establish a tempo and, uh, you know, punch them in the mouth before they punch us. The Wildcats improved their season record to 17 and 6. Lady Cats basketball team basically used five players to win a squeaker at Sherman 42 to 41 Tuesday evening. And we learn more about the thrilling win from Lady Cats coach Brittany Tisdell. It was. It was really thrilling for them because they busted a three at the end and they went nuts. I mean, they went completely nuts. To, for a second, I thought, man, did they call a foul on us? And she's going to the free throw line to tie it up. I was very confused. I was going, what's going on? I kept looking at the ref like, did you call a foul on that? And uh, 
I guess I, they thought they had won is what their assistant coach said. They oh. thought they had won it with that three, but um, they were down by four, so we still won 42 to 41. But I'm telling you, I was very confused for a minute. <laughs> It was a tough situation, uh, kind of a shorthanded team, and you just had to make it to the end, I guess. Yeah, we were just pushing through, pushing through, because, you know, without Willis, that hurts us a lot. And then Serenity, they think she may have bruised her foot or something, like have a bone bruise. And um, so she couldn't play last night. Um, so we pretty much played the game with five. Um, but those five really stepped up and did a great job. I mean, they never acted tired. They they never acted like they needed to come out. Um, got into some fouling that I thought might hurt us. Might, mm -hmm. but we we survived. So one thing I like to see from them, especially with Willis sitting on the sideline, is we're scoring the forties. You know, a lot of times you see a team that's struggling being in the 20s and the 30s, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we're, we're putting up a good amount of points, it seems like. Yeah, they. it was, you know, the Hugo game, it was rough. It was our first game without her, and um, it was a tough one for us because it was already going to be a hard game with her, and then um, much less not having her. Um, so it was kind of a, a lesson that, hey, we got to step up. We got to, you know, just work more as a team, help each other out, be, play a, a role you're not supposed to play. And um, they really just did that last night. So Now uh, coming up next, the uh, start of district play, and it couldn't get a tougher assignment from Roy City. Uh, <laughs> ranked in the top 20 in mm -hmm. 5A, so, uh, but yeah. at home, so that'll help. Yeah, so yeah, I think they're at 14 right now, where they were at two, so um, I'm not sure who beat them to knock them down that much, but um, it's definitely going to be a tough matchup for us, um, but uh, looking at them, you know, I think um, we can match up with them, I really do, with, um, you know, Cordell at the post, and I think it's going to be hard for him to score over her, so, um, I think it. I think will it will be a good game. All right. Do you anticipate maybe some JVers stepping up uh, to the varsity with the kind of this shortage right now with the injuries and stuff? We've pulled up Addison Lamb, and she has um, gone in so far to um, two games, and she has scored in two games, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she brings good defense to the table. That's one of the things, one of the reasons that's – because there's some of them, they're real neck and neck on JV on who to pull up, but her defense really pulled her out from the group. Um, so – and that's why we pulled her out. But then she uh, – pulled her up. But then she went in and she scored a few times. So she made some threes um, in our Kauffman tournament. And um, she drove in for a layup during Hugo. So um, we've pulled her up and she's really come onto the court and done some good things for us. The Lady Cats season record is now 7-16. and 16. Lady Cats soccer team opened the regular season on Tuesday night with a 2-2 tie with North Lamar at Gerald Prem Stadium. The Lady Cats had to come back twice to earn the tie. And I talked with Lady Cats soccer coach Javier Aguayo. They surprised all of us. Uh, they're a tough opponent. Uh, they came they came on early on, maybe three, three minutes, three minutes and a half, yeah. and they scored on us first. They surprised us really, really quick. Uh, I told the girls, Hey, they're gonna come out. They come out hard, so we need to be ready for it. And they did. I mean, like I said, they scored on us first. So we had. I mean, I feel once they score on you first, you have to try to figure things out and kind of come back from a 1-0 uh, deficit. But other than that, I mean, I think we we played well. We came back and tied it with that corner kick, Vanessa Lars corner kick, or not corner, kick, but a lost ball and a corner kick, and uh -huh. Vanessa put it in. But like I said, I think uh, they have a great team. Yeah, they do. Uh, and also, they've already played. Uh, I think four games. They, yeah. they played some tough schools, yeah. uh, some 6As, 5As. Um, so, I mean, it was the first game yesterday. But I think we look well. Uh, we have uh, we had shots that they could, have got, could have gone in and they didn't. But other than that, we need to, we need to work more. Yeah, they took the lead with about 20 minutes left. And, um, you know, about yeah. 10 minutes later, we were able to get the tying goal. Yeah. So that that's good that the team you know didn't just give up at that point and come. Yeah, back and that's time. that's what me and Kristoff told them like, hey, don't give up, get your head up, just go out there and play. We still got, we still have about 20 minutes left, uh, a little bit less, or I think it was. But um, and we told them, hey, get your head up, let's play, let's let's try to win this game. We still, we still win this game. I mean, anything can happen in soccer within five minutes. 
left of the game, two minutes, anything can happen. Go out there and fight. Yeah, and uh, the girls did. They responded well, and then we scored that tying goal, 2-2. Uh, we wanted a little bit more. We wanted to win. Uh, the girls were trying till the last, I mean, till the till the, the match ended. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, like I said, the ball couldn't go in. Uh, it's years It ago, happens. Years ago, we were in the same district with them, and very yes. spirited yes. games always, yes. very tough physical. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't quite that way last night. They, I mean, sometimes they got into it. Yeah, they got into it. Pretty but, good, but... Uh, but it was good to kind of renew that old rivalry. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think like uh, there was, I mean, there was people out in the stands, you know, they remember back, like you said, back in the day when North Lamar, Paris, mm -hmm. Suffer Springs, they had that big rivalry, rivalry, sorry. Uh, and like I said, yesterday, I think it kind of brought back some some memories. And I mean, I, I even used to come and watch the girls play against North Lamar. My brother and them, uh, he played here for Coach Holt back in 2008. Uh, 09 and then they that's when they also they played in the district with Paris and North Lamar and all that so yeah. I mean I got to see some girls games and guys games against North Lamar and Paris and like you know we were talking about it's it's a big rivalry against them and I mean yeah. it, it was nice to to, do, to have that yesterday and then like a lot of fans were remembering about it as well um, like I said hey they they were a tough team they were they're a really good team yeah the coach had it all planned out well and then his uh, three striker girls up top I mean they were really fast they surprised yeah. us a lot yeah. Uh, now you have a pine tree tournament yes, coming sir. up, and uh, we'll be playing some uh, interesting <clears throat> teams. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll play uh, Cleburne, Jacksonville, and Pine Tree. Mm -hmm. uh, which w earlier this morning we received an email. It might rain out Saturday, uh, Friday. Sorry, so we might get canceled that game Friday. We'll we'll, we'll still see. Uh, but other than that, we'll be ready to go on Thursday, and then uh, both uh, varsity and JV. So we'll see how we do out there. I'm looking forward to playing Jacksonville. I know their girls are pretty well, mm -hmm. uh, pretty have a good team, and then also Pine Tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's another good rivalry. Yeah, we had some great district games with them. Goals hard to come by, and yeah, and everything seemed to be very important. It meant a lot. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't think they scheduled that by accident. <laughs> I think they wanted to yeah, they play wanted, again. Yeah. yeah, so I, I talked to Coach Yoder, and uh, like I said, I told him, like, hey, you know, just put me with some some teams out there, you know. If, country against Suffer Springs or Jacksonville and and he did I mean they put us on there with a really good bracket mm -hmm. um, so we'll see we'll see where our girls can handle <laughs> that's channel 18 TV news I'm Don Julian thank you for joining me and so long everybody